name is Dave Cassie and I am an instructor here at the School of Science, Technology and Allied Health with the Department of Biological Sciences. I am very happy to welcome you to the University of the Southern Caribbean here in Maracas, St. Joseph. Um, I'm very happy as well and honored to be part of the fourth annual River Conference hosted by the Adopt a River program Trinidad and Tobago. And as you are aware, the theme of this year's conference is Connecting the Dots, Becoming Agents of Change. I would be um, very, it'll be very remiss of me if I don't say that we talk about rivers. In fact, we talk about rivers and much, much more. It's actually about uh, environmental sustainability. And as you would see on this slide, I have a picture here of the uh, of and a view of the uh, surrounding environment at, atop the Mount St. Benedict. And as you can see, of course, there's a natural interplay with man and the environment. And because of this interplay, we now have to focus on how we can sustain the environment around us. In a definition for environmental sustainability, the United Nations World Commission on Environment and Development defines susta uh, environmental sustainability. About, it's about acting in a way that ensures future generations have natural resources available to live an equal, if not better way of life as current generations. So in a nutshell, it is really telling us we should leave the world in a better place than we found it. My presentation will actually deal with three key areas. I will talk about the fact that COVID-19 has become a game changer for environmental sustainability in higher education. I will also show you and discuss with you the fact that educators are themselves change agents and some of the teaching and learning strategies that are adopted actually have very important impacts on the environment. And lastly, I will bring to you some change agents that you have right here in Trinidad and Tobago to connect the dots. As we are aware, the COVID-19 pandemic has essentially upset the Palm City card. Yes, what has it really done for the environment? Has it done anything good? In my preparation for this presentation, I actually came across a very important piece of literature which actually outlines the fact that COVID-19 has been a double-edged sword or a two-edged sword for uh, the environment. As you can see, there are positive impacts on the environment as well as negative impacts on the environment. The reason I'm mentioning COVID-19 is that these positive impacts are something we can learn lessons from and take forward in higher education into the 21st century. We can recognize that with the result of the lockdown, there was reduced fossil fuel consumption. Having to stay at home during those periods of time would of course engender a reduction in greenhouse gases, emissions themselves. Again, there was reduced pollution and improved water quality, renew, reduced noise pollution, as well as improved air quality. In addition to as well, there would have been some form of ecological restoration with the times away from those eco-tourist um, destinations themselves. This study was actually conducted by two researchers, Room and Islam, um, from Bangladesh. Additionally, um, new studies have also shown, and that was done by Mustafa, Gamal, and Wafiq, right um, currently this year, that COVID-19 had impacts on the environment in terms of air pollution and environmental in indicators as evidenced by the case study done in Egypt. So what does this mean for us? It means as well we still have to implement uh, sustainable strategies for environmental management. And as the uh, authors showed us, Room and Islam, there are still, there's still room for more strategies that we can adopt to ensure that there's environmental sustainability. From the use of renewable energy, from wastewater treatment and reuse, to even the ecological restoration and ecotourism, as well as behavioral changes in daily life. And this is where we are now talking about the change in the individual. 
What does this mean now for higher education going forward? How can we really impact the environment positively and ensure that there is environmental sustainability? Well, I want to posit that going forward, higher, edu higher education needs to focus on virtual campuses. The idea of a virtual campus actually involves the use of more online and blended programs. Virtual campus themselves do not require much general infrastructure. Also, the use of smart de devices has actually been the experience from COVID and going post-COVID-19, you will recognize it is the future of where classrooms have to be. Coupled with that, if higher education institutions provide more online, blended, as well as the hybrid programs, in addition to face-to-face -to -face programs, then we can actually impact the environment even more. Again, because of the need to remain at home, we saw it in COVID, in, in the COVID-19, in the, during this COVID-19 pandemic. We are also seeing it now where it is that education can continue without this, necess um, this any um, unnecessary disruption. In fact, COVID-19 could, COVID could be considered the disruption that actually fast forward the need for universities across the Caribbean to involve themselves in more online learning. It should be noted as well that working from home, and again studying from home, uh, should be a policy in terms of where we talk about working in terms of the um, the modern worker, the modern employee should be given the option by employers to work at home. Because simply, it, again, there's less traffic congestion, less time spent commuting, and again, even as a student, there is less time spent on the, on, on the, on the roadways, and of course, it's a general conservation of the environment. In the 21st century, higher education cannot be only online, but we can have what we describe as smart campuses. Hamdan bin Muhammad Smart University is an actual university in the UAE which has practiced the use of smart buildings and in that way they have lowered operational costs. There is greater energy efficiency and of course there's an improved uh, visitor and student experience. In the Caribbean, we have to make use of the, the natural environment in which our universities find themselves. Hence the use of the natural uh, lighting, the ventilation, and again the location that could also have impacts on positive environmental sustainability. Now what does this mean for you? As we look at change, environmental leadership, and you. You are at the center as a leader. And on the slide I have here, of course, the very famous uh, Greta Thunberg, who has made inroads into her advocacy for climate change. You too can be a Greta Thunberg. It does not matter what age you are. It doesn't matter what gender you are. It doesn't matter your socioeconomic status. Your passion is what you will use to propel changes in your environment. And this is where you start. From the individual, to the community, to the nation, to the world. So your part in environmental leadership is very important. So we do have heroes out in the wider world, but we also have environmental leaders here as well in Trinidad and Tobago who are actually implementing sustainable environmental energy strategies for, again, the preservation of the environment. From an individual level, again, there's advocacy here. For example, we have the Adopt the River Program Youth Ambassador Lou Pounder, who has been an advocate, again, via his spoken word pieces. He is also an ambassador at large, in a way, for the environment. Very recently as well, in Trinidad and Tobago, in the Cashew Gardens area in central Trinidad, uh, there was the launch of a solar and wind-powered community greenhouse. This it bears record to the fact that in small steps, as a community, a community can take the lead in sustainable, in environmental sustainability and sustaining the environment as a whole. We are also aware that coming in the future, 
there will be uh, much more emphasis as well on solar energy. And for example, the Orange Group Solar, Orange Group solar Farm, which is a project uh, organized by a consortium of Light Source BP, they have taken the initial steps to actually involve the use of solar power energy in a solar farm in the Golden Grove area. They, it, the project is still at its embryonic stages, but of course they have already um, met with stakeholders and they are taking the idea forward in order to um, obtain their EIAs and CECs, etc. So in Trinidad and Tobago, we do have game changers, we do have environmental change leaders from an in, from individual to the community to corporate Trinidad and Tobago. So the work is yet is, is a lot of work yet to be done, and it is only up to us as individuals to impact the environment around us. I've taken you as, for example, as a uh, education leader to show you that in higher education, we can make a difference to environmental, environmental sustainability because there are strategies that we can use in the classroom, to the boardroom, to the outside environment, which can help in sustaining the environment. Before I leave you, I would like to share with you actually in, in this environment as well, a scripture verse which speaks as well of the of those or what will happen to those who destroy the environment so my encouragement to you is there but we also have even from the scriptures a warning about those who destroy the environment this is taken from the book of revelations chapter 11 and verse 18 which says and the nations were angry and the ra and thy wrath is come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy saints the prophets and to the saints and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them that destroy the earth. So you have been encouraged and you have been, in, have been warned. It is up to you now to take the challenge of becoming an environmental leader and an agent of change. I thank you.